guys so here i am i'm not doing this one live oh my gosh look at the full shortening look how big my tea looks i can hide in the cup <laughs> um so i'm here to make an easter bunny with you all this is something that i used to make um for friends um babies um and i'm sorry friends if you're watching this if i haven't made your baby one but i haven't made one of these in ages um and so i thought it'd be a really nice project though to show you guys because um, it, you just need an old pillowcase or something and it's so easy and I thought I'd make one for Jasmine for Easter Sunday and then um, I could share how I make it with you. Sorry, this is wonky, isn't it? As always, got problems with my oopsie daisies with my tripod. Have you seen this as well, actually? I'll just show you quickly. Me and Jasmine are going big with our paper mache at the moment. I bought a load of these before we came up here um, from a Cass Arts, I think. And they're paper mache animals and then you decoupage them. I love this one. We are going to have the whole of Noah's Ark by the time this lockdown is over. Okay, so Easter Bunny. I haven't made one to show you it. So um, I will um, just get cracking and I'll... Obviously, you're not going to see me do every single bit because it would make this video really long, but I'm going to show you how I make it. Now, as you can see, it's pretty basic. I've just drawn. This is the body. So you need a body and you need to put two of those. And then let's just put, actually, I'll put, let's write on them so we remember. Times two, body. Then we've got ears, legs and arms. Ears, legs, arms. No, Ears, arms, legs. That's what we need as well. And then this beautiful drawing is the head. And we just need two of those. So once you've cut those out, I'm sorry, once you've drawn those out, just cut them out. Um, and then we are going to cut them out and pin them onto some fabric. So um, I'll just quickly show you. I have got, I've been poor mum. She's like, her, her laundry cupboard is being cut up with, I keep asking her, can I have this? Anyway, this is just an old inner cushion cover um, and I'm cutting it up. It's white, I think it's poly cotton actually, or cotton is fine. Or you could use a tea towel. You can use whatever you've got. I mean, if you've got a scrap of cotton fabric, which is patterned, that's also lovely. Um, I'm just gonna make mine white. So I'm gonna cut all of these out and then I'll talk to you about how we sew them. Hey, okay. <clears throat> so I have cut out everything. And we are going to start with ears, legs. So ears, arms and legs. Um, that's a leg there, isn't it? Right. So just take your pattern off. And I've got white thread on my sewing machine so that you won't see it. And I'm just going to pin two of the legs together. And I'm going to sew around with a centimetre seam allowance. Uh, Obviously, if you're making the pattern, then you can make yourself a smaller seam allowance if you want to, but a centimetre is easy to follow and it's not too bad to negotiate around the corners or the curves. So what we're doing with the legs is we are sewing, we're not sewing across the, the square top because that's where we're gonna put some stuffing in. So we're sewing down the long sides and we are sewing down the, around the curve. Oh. Vibration, sorry guys. Um, I'll show you in a second. There we go. So, down here, up and around. Okay, and we've left that open bit. Make sure you do a reverse stitch here and here. Okay. And then I go on to another leg. So you just want to do this with all of your pieces. Um, so with your all of your kind of V-shaped pieces. So your ears, your arms and your legs. So I've now sewn those. So now what we're going to do is trim. Where are my big scissors? Here they are. We're going to trim down the seam allowance, okay? I forgot to say that you need to um, make sure when you're stitching around the curve, you, you put your needle in and you pivot a little bit because you might find that some of these curve points, it's hard just to get the whole thing round whilst the machine is still stitching. So just stop, put the needle in. Uh, to the fabric, lift up the presser foot and just pivot it round a little bit just to get yourself around that curve. So what I'm doing now is I'm just trimming down half of the seam allowance. So we've got about a seam allowance left of five millimetres. So you need to do this on all the pieces you've just sewn. So your legs, your arms and your ears. So 
So we are now going to stuff the legs. So if you take the ears and pop them to one side, so they'll be the smallest pieces. So we're going to turn the legs and the arms the right way round. Okay, like that. And then I've just got a cushion here and I'm going to use stuffing from that. If you don't have the, a cushion, you could use, you could stuff it with some more white fabric. Obviously that wouldn't be as soft. Um, I wouldn't use cotton wool because if you want to be able to wash it, that's just going to not work. But you might be able to just get some wadding out of something like a pillow or a cushion that you've already got and just stitch it back up once you've taken a little bit out because it doesn't need masses. So I think that's, that's just a little bit of a space there. So that's kind of the amount that we want to stuff it, okay? So much so that we can still close that like that and we'll redistribute that into the leg once we have attached it to the body. So I'm now gonna do that with my other leg and my two other arms. So I now have my two legs stuffed and my arms as well. So what I'm gonna do now is close them off. So just going to put a little pin in here and I'm going to sew them at five millimeters from that raw edge because when we attach them to the body of the, um, and the <coughs> excuse me, the body of the rabbit, we're gonna use a centimeter seam allowance. So we don't want, oops, we don't want this to show at that um, point. So we need to close them so that those edges are together and we don't have to worry about the stuffing coming out as we're attaching it. But we don't want that to be visible. So you can see there, that stitch closed. Now I don't worry that that's empty because like I said, we'll distribute that stuffing back into that little gap once we've attached it to the body. So I'm just doing this with the two arms and the two legs. You could also as well just get rid of some of that extra fraying if you're getting any fraying and obviously do trim off your loose ends as well as you go. Otherwise you're gonna get all those threads inside the bunny, which we don't want. Okay, so we're now going to attach everything together. So what I'm gonna do is I've got one piece of my body and I'm placing my legs onto along the bottom edge of that. So I'm lining up the raw edges of the legs with that bottom um, edge of the bunny. So it's like that, yeah? So if this had a right side or a wrong side, I'd be attaching them to the uh, right side. <laughs> wrong, yeah, right side, there we go. Um, and then I'm gonna do the same with the arms. Just try and get them in the even position to each other. Okay, so it looks a bit awkward, but that's what it should be like. Then I'm gonna take my that, no, I think it would probably be a good idea to machine tuck those in, actually. Let's do that. <laughs> so let's just whiz along there, again, at the same seam allowance that we put in um, on the, uh, just that we used to close off the limbs, the legs and the arms. So I'm just following on that same stitch line and just stitching that on, because then we don't have to contend with pins and things. So that's one arm. So those are now attached like this and I'm sort of overlapping them and holding them sort of so it's snuggling its legs in and then I'm going to take the uh, oops, the other piece and place that over. Now this is all going to be a bit awkward because we've obviously got lots of um, bulk in there but just try your best to pin around so that you're lining up the raw edges of your body pieces and your, um, oops, just move my tea so you can see a little bit more, um, and then sandwiching in those arms and legs. When you get round to the top, what we're going to do is we will be leaving a section for the head. So don't worry about the top yet. I'm just going to carry on pinning around that bit. When you get to a limb as well, it, a limb, Sounds awful when I call them a limb. But when you get to a leg or an arm, 
just make sure you're pinning like that through them so you don't want to be catching in more of the um, arm or leg than you need to and if you pin into the um, into it like that it will just hold it back okay so this is what it's starting to look like and I now I'm just going to take my head piece uh, there and remembering that there will be a seam allowance taken away so for a centimeter I'm just going to mark where the those sort of bits that's what we're going to stitch into the body so I'm just going to mark where they are and less the seam allowance so popping a pin in there on that side and the same on that side okay so those two pins are showing me where I start sewing and where I finish sewing so I'm going to start go all the way around and finish there making sure that I reverse now I think it would be easier to put a single arm foot on my machine if I've got it here with me now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my zip foot on so mine's single arm but if yours is one where it's just the sides are missing that's also fine because it will just help you cope with the bulkiness um, at the edges so starting up here oops I've put it on the wrong way Putting back and move my needle over so it just makes it a little bit easier so I'm starting at where that pin upright pin was at the top marking the start where that head will be going in and we're using a centimetre seam allowance do make sure you reverse you don't want the hole to appear. And then around we go. I'm just going to increase the stitch length because it's going to help me come around those corners a little bit better and feed through the machine a little bit more easily. Because when you find that it's really thick and chunky, it does feed through a little bit slower and therefore your stitches will get shorter without you wanting them to. just coming round to the legs I'm really holding them still as I take the pins out and then slowly going around that curve so you get a nice curve but take it slowly you'll find you'll be able to angle it better if you're going slowly make sure when you finish at the top you reverse as well so now it's a little bit tricky but what we're going to do is we're going to pull let's cut, trim that off and pull these out so one arm at a time Oops. first like that and then start to turn the body inside out and you can pull the legs through be careful because we don't want to rip that opening at the top. I haven't trimmed down the uh, seam allowance of the body. I think because I'm just concerned that it might, it, you know, needs to have a little bit more strength so for this stage. Um, but you could, if you're worried the seam allowances are a bit too big, you could do that. There we go. Our bunny is taking shape. So we are now going to work on the head because our body is looking good so with the head we've got to start with the ears so the ears we are actually going to do some ironing because we need to press them into a nice crisp edge so first just turn them through um, it's a little bit fiddly that getting there getting there 
give me a shake. And so what we're going to do, I haven't got the iron here, so I'm going to go away and do this, but we're going to iron it to roll it so that the seam is right on the edge and then press it flat. So do that with both of your ears. So my ears now are nicely pressed, so they're looking like that. And we are going to attach them to the top of our um, bunny head. So I've just got one of those pieces. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little pleat. Sorry, that's Coco crying beneath me. A little pinch like that, almost like a little pleat, and just put a pin in it. Okay. And then the same on this one. Little pleat, like that. Coco wants to go up clearly, but there's not really much space. Okay, so then I'm going to line up. <coughs> that was her. I'm then going to pop them up at the big top. Coco. There's not space for you up here, darling. No. Coco, you just lie down there, yeah? Um, so, ears. You want them to be a decent um, distance apart. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um because ears aren't, they're not completely together, are they? So mine are looking like that. So keeping the pleats in um, and then, oh, I've got to put that foot back on. So I've got my regular foot. Ah, there it is. And then I'm just going to machine tack, well, it doesn't even matter if it's not a tack, but again, underneath, within that one centimetre seam allowance, so ideally around five mils, just to anchor these in. And I'm just going to go from one and carry on sewing all the way to the other. Just trying to move out of the way, naughty Mr. Ear. There we go. Okay. So that's them attached like that. Then, just like we did with the body, we are going to, I'm just going to overlap those like that and just tuck them there so that they're out of the way. And then I'm going to place the other headpiece right sides, so sort of right sides together if there was a right side to your fabric. And the main thing is that you're sandwiching in your, um, you're sandwiching in, I'm just trimming this off, this is the edge of the cushion. <laughs> You're sandwiching in the ears, is what we're aiming for. Coco's prowling around the room as though she's some sort of tiger. She obviously just wants a bit of attention. Ooh. So yeah, just pin all the way around there. And then, once you've pinned all the way around, we're just gonna sew it with a centimetre seam allowance. And just remember, we're going to stop here and we're going to stop here. So you are going to have to pivot, putting your needle in to get down to that point. So you'll come round, put your needle in, pivot, and then just do that little short bit. Okay, so it is important on this that we clip into that corner bit because when we turn it through, that's going to be a place of tension if it's not been clipped and it's not going to pull out very well. So clip into there and then, like we did before, pull the ears first and that will help you pull the whole thing through. Like that. And there we have our little bunny head. Oh, that annoying bit of cushion. When I was cutting the other side, I caught the top of the uh, cushion zip, and so I've got a bit of random zip tape in there. Okay. There. Floppy ears. So then we need to just push those little bits out there, so we're getting that shape. And then we're going to stuff the head. Okay, need to get a bit more stuffing for that. And just stuff it really, you know, as much as you can. 
um, um, but not overly so because we still need to be able to keep that little neck area free so that we can stitch that into the body. Okay, so my head is now stuffed and I've just gone ahead and closed that bit as well, just like we did with the uh, arms and legs. And I've also gone ahead and I've stuffed my body. And so now this is the tricky bit. We're gonna tuck that gap. So that seam allowance there, we need to tuck in. And then we're gonna take our head and we're gonna slot him in. Now it's very fiddly because what we wanna do is get the head in as much as we can. And we also need to try and get, and keep that edge of that seam allowance on the body folded in. Um, so, oops. There we go. And then I'm just going to do the same on that, so this side. Okay. So he is kind of, yeah, like that, yeah? So now what I recommend doing is taking a needle and thread, I'm not sure if I've got one here, I always I have, and just hand tacking that in position because we are gonna machine it, but we can't machine it with those pins in that position, it will be too fiddly. So, what we need to do is do the job of the pins, um, but just yeah, with a big stitch, there's some running stitches through the layers just to hold everything together so that when we get it on the machine, it will keep in place. So single thread, and then I'm just gonna go in and out, catching my head in the neck, and making sure that that folded seam allowance is staying in there as well. So that won't be super strong, but what that will do is it will hold your bunny um, together so that um, he will, you'll be able to go in there and sew. And so now that's what you've got to do. And this is another tricky thing. I think I'm going to put my other presser foot on and I'm now going to sew along the edge of the body and catch that neckline in. flattening this as much as I can so that I can get in there. I'd increase the stitch length as well because it's struggling to feed this through a bit because we've got a lot, got a lot of fabric and wadding and things going on there. Do make sure as well that you reverse. going to do another little stitch there just to catch that bit. I think then the neck is in. Okay guys, so the rabbit is taking shape. Okay, um, so we do need to put some uh, features on with a bit of embroidery but um, I've gone ahead and I've made a few little bits to dress the rabbit in. Now, I didn't really have time to film how I was doing them, but I just made a little kind of neckerchief and I folded a piece of fabric in half, cut it on an angle, um, and that has created a little tie, kind of edge stitched round. Little neckerchief there. Helps bring the neck in as well um, to give it a little bit more shape. Um, and I have made in the past little um, dungarees for boys, if the rabbit's for a little boy, but because this is for a girl, it's for Jazzy, um, I made it a little dress because that's easier. <laughs> and all I did um, is I basically uh, made a little gathered skirt. I just ran some elastic round a little tube. I'm realizing I probably put the, I think I put the sleeves, the arms in a little bit to, uh, <laughs> too low and then I made some little straps by just folding a piece of fabric in half lengthways and then again tucking the raw edges in a bit like you'd make straps to a tote bag something like that and now I'm just fitting uh, 
Did a bit of fitting on the bunny. <laughs> fitting the bunnies um, in, the little arms in. I'm regretting my position of that, the arm, but I think I might have to move that up a bit, actually. Let's see. Getting there, isn't it, guys? Getting there. That is going to bug me. So I'm going to move that slightly higher up. I don't know what happened there. So if you need to do that, what you could do is you could, you just have to unpick that section and then you will have to hand stitch it in. Um, but yeah, I don't know how it's the right position on that side, but it's not on this side. Okay, I've moved the arm. I'm feeling happier about the arm now. So what we're going to do now, I've got her little dress on, I've got a little neckerchief on. So now I'm just going to draw in her eyes. So the way that I do the eyes is I just draw in, so I've got a pencil here. I just draw in kind of as though her eyes were closed like that. And then I'm going to do her a little, little square nose, so slightly triangular, and then little mouth. Like that. So then I'm going to take some embroidery thread and we're going to back stitch. Now, ideally, it's good if you can use all strands of your embroidery thread because that will just mean that it'll be nice thick features but if you can't get that through your needle then you could just do six and then you can um, just double it over when you thread the needle. So I'm going to start off, it's really hard to show you guys, and we're going to do a back stitch. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to try and pull that knot in. It's quite hard to do that. There we go. So I've pulled it so it's inside now. And then I'm going to back stitch. It's Jazzy in the kitchen next door. Back stitch along these arm lines. Like that. Okay. So, just basically in and out, back stitching along. It's quite hard for me to show you, but if you see it like that, that's how I'm doing it. So, back stitch the eyes and then get to the nose, and I'll show you how we're doing the nose. So, I've got to the nose, I'm doing the same thing that I've pulled the knot through, and we're just going to do a satin stitch to do the nose. So, essentially, I'll do it like that. I can kind of stitch. We are just running stitches right up next to each other and um, we're going to get the width of that nose down. So start to shape the nose by making the stitches slightly smaller and smaller. Got the nose there and then I'm going to take my thread back into the middle and we're going to do the mouth by the same technique of back stitching that we did the eyes okay so following your pencil line mine seems to have disappeared <laughs> but following your pencil line to create that little mouth I'll just do one side and then I can show you what how it's looking. Oops. Keep getting the little necktie in there. Like that. Okay, so then we'll just do the other side in the same way. Okay, so there it is. Floppy eared little Easter bunny. Um, I hope Jazzy's gonna like that. I might just tie that into another little knot. Let's see if that works better. Yeah, a little bit more dainty in her little dress. Easy peasy. Um, anyway, guys, happy Easter and uh, I hope you enjoyed that project. Bye.